you're here lost and undone without the Lord, it don't matter what's going on around you, it don't matter where you're at, just call out on the name of the Lord and you can be saved. If, he, if he's drawing you, you can be saved. And again, thank you for being here. And, and church, I would desire tonight, above everything else, that you pray that the Lord would have his will and his way in this service. And again, I want to say what a great honor it's been for me to, to come and, and you made us feel just like me and my wife talked talk about it going home last night. It feels like we've been here forever. Feels like y'all just, just welcomed us in and we want to thank you from the bottom of our heart for that. Let's stand as we sing this next verse. And, uh, I, don't, I don't know how to carry out a service. I, I've pastored up. I'm on my third church. And, and I was telling Eric just a minute ago, I said, sometimes welcoming people to the house of the Lord is harder than getting up and trying to preach, it seems like. You just can't find the right words to welcome. But, but if the Holy Spirit don't make you feel welcome, you're in bad shape. So if you're here and saved, you know what I'm talking about. We just want the Holy Spirit to move in this place tonight. So may God bless you and be our prayer tonight. Thank God tonight. It was a wonderful song design. I, I sat here as he began to sing the song "Would Thou Be Made Whole." Lost person, you got to hear that twice. Last night, you got to hear it sung, and the Lord brought a message saying, "Would Thou Be Made Whole?" And then you got to hear it again tonight. And His question that that Christ is always Asking is what wilt thou be made whole? What do you mean by that, preacher? He wants to make your life whole by saving your soul. That's what we mean by that. When when he says, Wilt thou be made whole, he wants to save you. Christ said he came not into the world to, to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And I thank God tonight. You know what? A lot of people say they don't want to hear a condemning message and they'll not preach a condemning message. I want to tell you this, if the message condemns you, it's from the Lord Jesus Christ because if man can condemn you, you're in bad shape. I don't want to take away anything that the Holy Spirit of God can do. And the Holy Spirit of God will condemn me of my sins. Whether I like it or whether I don't like it, whether I agree with it or disagree with it, the Holy Spirit of God lets me know exactly where I stand with Him. If we didn't have the Holy Spirit of God guiding us in our life, listen, we'd be in bad shape. We wouldn't have any direction to go. We wouldn't know what to follow. Why in the world? You know what folks say, I don't understand why in the world the world is in the shape that it's in. Let me tell you why the world's in the shape it's in. It's because the world is trying to live their life without God leading them in their life. They do not have a Savior. That's the reason that, that folks are in the, in the shape that they're in. They have no shepherd to guide them. When Andy called me this morning, I said, I was... He told me last night he was going to go to the doctor. He said, I got these sinuses going on. He said, I'm going to go to the doctor in the morning and get a shot. He said, maybe I'll feel better. And I was so worried all, all night about it. I said, you know what? He's going to have COVID, and then this is going to be laid in my lap. So he called me. When he called me, he said, well, he said, I'm going to leave it up to the church, whatever the church decides, ever which direction they want to go. He said, are you willing to go? As soon as he, he said that, the scripture where David said, is there not a cause, came on my heart. And I'm, I'm going to read that. that I don't... I, I sit here and I ponder this and, and I tried to dismiss that, that thought all day. But the, the, very, the very question 
that, and the very thing that the, the thing I'll tell you today, there is a cause for us to be in God's house tonight. More than ever today, there, there's a great need for the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ to go out to a lost and a dying world. I believe today that that these days, we, we, we talk about it, we call it the last days. Folks say, well, I've heard it called the last days ever since I was a young child. But I want you to know this today, the Lord ain't come back yet, but He's coming. One day after a while, when we least expect it, He's coming. And whether He comes one by one, or he, he comes in the clouds of glory, I've got confidence and I believe in His Word today, and I believe today that He is coming. He, he said He'd never leave us and never forsake us. If you've been saved by the grace of God today, you, listen, He said, them that are dead in Christ which shall rise first, but let me tell you, them that are alive and remain shall be caught up with Him in the clouds of glory and forever be with the Lord. He's coming, folks. He's coming. Don't, don't, uh, don't think for one minute that He's not, but He is. I thought about when, when David, when the uh, uh, Philistines over there and the, and the Israelites, the Bible said that that there, there they was getting ready to go into battle and it said uh, the Philistines was on one side of the mountain and the Israelites was on the other side. So there was the valley right down there in the middle of them. They was looking across one to, one to another. I thought about the many times in life, here we are on this side and, and, and we're on this side, Satan's on the other side and there's a valley in between us and he all he's doing is, is he's doing just like uh, that giant did. The Bible said that uh, that, that the giant, that Philistine over there, when he come out, I'll get. I, I don't know where I'm going to start reading here. I'm just. I just want to follow the Lord. But the Bible said that that Philistine. Y'all all have heard the story of David and Goliath. But they said the Bible said that he would come out, and he done it for forty days, and he'd come out across that mountain, and he'd show himself for forty days. He done that to the Philistine to the to the Israelites over there. And when he, done, uh, when he done it, I believe all he was doing was tempting them and saying, uh, there's no way today that uh, uh, you can beat me because of who I am. I, I read this story earlier today and I said, oh, Lord, uh, let me just go through and, and I'll break this down and I'll tell them how big of a man he was and uh, how much his coat weighed and all this. And uh, you know what? All that don't matter today. Uh, uh, brother, what matters today Today, uh, brother, in your life, don't worry about how big Satan is or, or what he's throwing at you. Uh, brother, what you need to realize today, uh, brother, you need to go whatever, wherever you go today in the name of the Lord and everything will be all right. I thought about uh, this today. Whenever they'd look at it, he'd go out and he'd just taunt them every day uh, for 40 days. He said, you know what? Uh, go choose you out a man over there that uh, makes uh, make fight your battle for you and I thought about this the Bible said that uh, David that little uh, uh, little uh, the youngest of the sons that uh, uh, Jesse had was over there and uh, he is keeping uh, his father's sheep over there and uh, the Bible said he is a young uh, rudy little boy and, uh, but you know what uh, listen I thought about uh, this today uh, the Bible said that uh, he is keeping his sheep uh, over there in Bethlehem. Uh, uh, let me tell you this today. Uh, he was, uh, I believe David, uh, uh, was a gentle uh, uh, shepherd uh, uh, there to them sheep uh, uh, that, uh, uh, that he took care of. I believe uh, uh, that he watched them uh, and he cared for them uh, uh, with everything uh, uh, that was in him. Uh, uh, he done his best uh, uh, to look after uh, uh, the sheep uh, uh, that was appointed unto him. He cared for 
for them. But let me tell you this. Uh, uh, today I thought about a uh, uh, brother one day uh, uh, the, uh, about 2,000 years ago, uh, a little longer, a uh, uh, brother as a shepherd, a uh, uh, brother born uh, over there in uh, a lonely manger, a uh, uh, brother in Bethlehem, a uh, uh, brother in the same place, a uh, uh, brother that David uh, 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 took care of them sheep, a uh, uh, brother is in the same town, a uh, uh, brother that the good shepherd uh, uh, was born in. And I want you to know this, uh, uh, today I thought about it uh, as I looked on uh, uh, Jesus, uh, uh, the Bible said uh, in one place, uh, uh, he was not uh, uh, brother pretty to look at if you'll have it uh, uh, that way, uh, uh, brother it wouldn't uh, uh, be desired uh, uh, by a man's eyes, uh, and I want you to know this today, uh, uh, the, the Bible said uh, 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 that Jesse uh, uh, come uh, over there uh, to little day. David one day, uh, his uh, three other brothers uh, was over there in the battle. Uh, they had already laid out. A uh, brother went to the battle. Uh, and uh, the Bible said uh, that uh, Jesse told uh, David over there, he said, you take uh, uh, these parched corn uh, over there. And he said, you go, uh, uh, brother, over there to the battle uh, where your brothers are. Uh, and you take them uh, a little bit of corn uh, that they might be able to uh, let me tell you today, uh, uh, brother, it wouldn't hurt uh, uh, some of us today, uh, uh, brother, to take uh, our brother, uh, uh, brother, a little man, uh, 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 brother, every once in a while, uh, uh, brother, that we might be able, uh, uh, brother, to fight uh, the battle uh, uh, that is put in front of us today. Uh, I want you to know this, uh, uh, brother, we live in a day, uh, uh, today, where it's ever man, uh, uh, foreign sale, uh, uh, Listen, I want you to know this. But ain't you glad today, Jesse? Uh, brother, he didn't turn his eyes off David. He didn't take his eyes off them uh, three other sons uh, that was over there in the battle. Uh, but he, uh, listen, uh, David run. Uh, brother, he took uh, that corn over there. Uh, the Bible said he got down there uh, in the trenches uh, where there's a hat. Uh, let me tell you this. Uh, today, we need uh, to get in the trenches, uh, brother. The battle, uh, brother. Quit. Uh, folks say, Well, uh, what do you mean by that, uh, brother? I thought about uh, this today. Uh, there's folks, uh, loved ones in my life, uh, brother, where they took a hold, uh, brother. The Lord, uh, brother, can do a mighty work for him. Uh, but let me tell you this uh, it seems like, uh, brother, they just live uh, for their today. It don't matter about nobody else. As long as I'm happy, everything's all right. I want you to know this today. Uh, brother, I thought about uh, that, as I look out over there, over that uh, hill. Uh, you think about these North Georgia mountains, uh, uh, brother, and we think uh, how beautiful it is. Uh, brother, there's on one hill. Uh, brother, the Philistines is on the other. Uh, let me tell you this today. Uh, brother, uh, there that old giant was, he'd come out every day uh, for 40 days and present himself. I just talk to them, uh, saying, uh, you ain't going to beat me. Uh, listen to that. Uh, you, I want you to know this. Uh, Satan is presenting himself every day of your life today. He's presenting himself. Uh, he's saying there's no way in this world uh, you can beat me. I've got you right where I want you. Uh, let me tell you this today. Uh, don't give Satan uh, no more credit. Uh, brother uh, than he deserves. Uh, well, today uh, uh, he's presented himself unto you, uh, uh, brother, some big God. Let me tell you this. Uh, all he was, uh, uh, brother, was an angel uh, uh, cast down, uh, brother, out of heaven today. Uh, uh, brother, he's not a God. Uh, brother, uh, he was cast down uh, because he thought he was. Uh, uh, Christ over there uh, told him in one place, 
He said, I saw him fall from heaven as of lightning. Brother, quit giving him the power today. Brother, go with him in the name of the Lord. Brother, let me tell you this. If you're here today lost and undone, he may be talking to you, but I've got news for you. Brother, my God's greater than he is today. He's greater than that. Oh, today, I don't know where we'll... Where we need to start reading now. I done got way ahead of myself, but it's all right. Uh, listen today. Uh, folks say, well, uh, preacher, you need to be a little bit more dignified than that. Uh, listen, let me tell you this. Preachers need a uh, brother to get all the Spirit of God. A uh, brother and quit worrying about being dignified and satisfying the crowd. A uh, brother and God might work a little more. Lord of mercy. Here they are. That little old, little old David. Here he was over there. Run to battle. He, he had a question for him. He said, and David spoke to the men that stood by him saying, uh, no, let me back up one. He said, and the men of Israel said, have you seen this man that has come up? Surely to defy Israel is he come up and it shall be that the man who killeth him the king will enrich him with great riches and will give him his daughter and make her his house free in Israel. And David spoke to the men that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the man that killeth the Philistine that, and taketh away? For who is the son circumcised Philistine that should defy the armies of the living God? And the people answered him after this matter, saying, So shall it be done to the man that killeth him. And Elam, his eldest brother, uh, listen, this is just like we are. He said, and Elam, his eldest brother, heard. Uh, he spake unto these men, and he, Eli, Eli's anger was kindled against David. And he said, What came us uh, thou down hither? And with whom hast thou left those few sheep uh, in the wilderness? Well, today, listen, uh, brother, don't get mad. Uh, brother, when you see your brother, uh, brother doing good uh, in the name of the Lord. Uh, brother, lift him up tonight. Uh, so many today. Uh, brother, I've seen it uh, time and time again. How uh, uh, God's people, uh, brother, are jealous of uh, one of, a, of another. Uh, brother, you see your brother uh, being blessed today. Uh, brother, uh, lift him up. Uh, thank you, Lord. Uh, but listen today. Uh, there he was, his own brother. He said, well, all you've done, uh, you run down here. Uh, like you're somebody. Uh, woo! Uh, but let me tell you this. Uh, brother old David uh, was just like Jesus. Uh, just a little old shepherd boy. Uh, brother on the backside. Uh, brother keeping, uh, keeping the sheep. Uh, let me, well, today I thought about uh, the Bible saying uh, brother, there's another man. Uh, brother on the backside. Uh, brother, brother of the land uh, one time. Uh, keeping uh, brother his uh, Father, she oh, today, uh, brother. I thought about uh, brother when uh, brother Abraham, uh, God said, You get your son, uh, brother, you take him uh, up to the top of the mountain, and there you'll uh, sacrifice him. Uh, let me tell you what, uh, brother, lo and behold, uh, brother, what did Abraham do? Uh, he grabbed him, uh, took him up there. Uh, oh, listen, uh, today, Isaac said, Well. Uh, where is the sacrifice? Uh, the Lord said, I uh, will provide a lamb today. Uh, let me tell you what. Uh, Brother Abraham, he went on. Uh, Brother, he laid him there on the altar of the Lord. Uh, I want you to know this. Uh, brother, I believe he had uh, the knife all the way back. Uh, Brother, he looked over there in a ram. Uh, Brother, the lamb had done come up. Uh, brother, on the back side of the mountain, uh, let me tell you this. Uh, brother, uh, you may say, well, uh, what's that got to do uh, with anything tonight? Uh, you may be here, uh, brother, with a giant in your way tonight. 
church, but I want you, I've got good news. Brother, the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world, brother, is on your side. Oh, listen to that. It's okay for some of y'all to say amen. It ain't going to hurt a thing. I want you to know this. The lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. Uh, brother is on your side. He is uh, the good shepherd tonight. I thought about David. Uh, here he was. Uh, you know what? His brother got mad at him. What are you doing down here? And David said, oh, What have I now done? Is there uh, not a cause? Uh, listen today. Uh, there is a cause uh, for uh, God's men and women uh, to keep on uh, keeping on. Uh, that's right. Well, uh, church just ain't uh, like it used to be. Uh, brother, it is for me, uh, brother, and when the Holy Spirit of God uh, gets to moving tonight, uh, brother, it's as good as it was uh, the day uh, that he saved uh, my soul tonight. Whew. It can be as good for you if you'll let it. <laughs> well, he showed up so many times in my life. Uh, brother, how can we not praise him? How can, you know what? Uh, there's a lot of people today. Uh, they'll go into the house of the Lord. Uh, you know what? They set up churches. They say, you know what? We're going to set us up a praise and a worship team. Uh, you know what a good praise and worship team is? Uh, brother, when the Holy Spirit of God uh, takes over a man or a woman, uh, brother, and they can't help it, uh, brother. Uh, they'll say, uh, they'll shout, uh, brother. The Holy Spirit of God will move today, uh, brother. And you don't even have to go practice it. That's music to the Lord's ears. And David said, "What have I now done? Is there not a cause?" And he turned. From him toward another and swake up to the same man. Whoa! <laughs> Listen, these same people, uh, brother, oh, uh, they'll get themselves in a way. They'll say, you know what? Uh, we're going to go help the Lord out. Uh, let me tell you what today, uh, brother, I don't think David, uh, brother, had one thing in his mind saying, uh, let's say I'll go help the Lord out. Uh, brother, he knew where his help came from tonight. Brother, you might only get on your knees. You hear today, thank you. You just hear to help the Lord out. Brother, you need the Lord tonight. He don't need me. He don't need you. He's the Lord. He's the Almighty today. Brother, we need to realize we need Him today. He don't need us. We need him. We need a shepherd. His brother, old David's brother, he got mad at him. He said, why? Who'd you leave them sheep with over there? Guess what? I believe his brother might have knew David was a good little old shepherd. I ain't never thought of it that way. Who'd you leave them with? They may not be in good hands. A church, who have you left your kids with? Listen, they might not be in good hands. You might want to check up on them. Make sure Satan ain't got his hand all over them. Oh, whoa. Well, uh, listen to that. And when the whole, when the words were heard which David spake, they rehearsed them before Saul, and he sent for him. Uh, listen. And David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. Woo! Uh, let me tell you what today. Uh, and just a little old boy. Uh, Saul begins to say, You can't do that. Uh, you can't go fight him. Uh, well, and Saul said to David, They're not able uh, to go against this Philistine to fight with him. They are but a youth and a man of war. And he's a man of war uh, from his youth. Uh, well, today, uh, how we uh, dismiss uh, the importance uh, of what God tells us. Uh, listen today uh, just because uh, brother I may not look like a preacher to you uh, uh, bro, I want you to know this uh, bro, uh, brother the Lord called me uh, uh, brother you'll not stop him 
Uh, uh, brother, I can't stop him. Uh, I thought about so many times, well, Lord, I'm done with it. Uh, let me tell you this today. Uh, brother, once he calls you, uh, brother, uh, you're going to preach. Uh, he might be out in the woods uh, uh, to a stomp today. Uh, but, brother, you'll preach. You ain't going to get out of it. You ain't going to be... You ain't going to get out of what the Lord wants you to do. Listen today. <sighs> Saul, you know what? Even Saul, every one of them didn't have no faith in him. They didn't have no faith in him. And he was too little. You know what? <laughs> ain't nobody got no faith in me. They shouldn't. You shouldn't. I tell you what. <laughs> Brother, that part that Jesus saved, that man that lives with inside of me, brother, you'll not defeat him. You beat me to death. Uh, listen, I want you to know this today. Uh, you, uh, you may think you got Satan by the horns, but I can promise you this, Satan's bigger than you are. Uh, you're going to need some help in your life. Satan's bigger than I am. David said unto Saul, Thy servant keeps his father's sheep. And there came a lion and a bear and took, took a lamb out of the flock. <laughs> what did David say? He said, I went in after him. <laughs> and I went out after him and smote him and delivered him out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and I slew him. I'm going to tell you this. <laughs> The servant slew both the lion and the bear, and the uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, sin hath defiled the armies of the living God. David said, Moreover, the Lord hath delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the, out of the bear. He will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Go, and the Lord be with thee. Finally, he give in. You know what? Brother, you... You need to, you hear lost and undone tonight. You know what you need to do. You need to say, you know what? I've fought this as long as I can find it. Oh, you know what? If, if, this, if this thing that I'm feeling is so real in my life, you know what? I'm just going to go with that. Uh, that part that has been drawing me all week, I'm going to trust that. I'm tired today of being beat down. A uh, brother telling me I can't move uh, when the Holy Spirit tells me to move. Uh, brother, uh, just step out uh, from wherever you're at. Uh, brother, the Lord uh, will go with you. And Saul, this is a good part right here. Saul armed David with his armor and he put a helmet of brass upon his head. Also he armed him with a coat of mail. And David girded his sword upon his armor. And he is quite saved to go, for he had not proved it. Hello, I'm glad today. Oh, preacher, what made you want to come uh, when Andy wasn't going to be here? Uh, listen today. Uh, listen, there's not a cause. Uh, brother, uh, the, uh, the pastor of Goshen ain't even here. Uh, what persuaded you uh, that you'd come up here? Uh, brother, you'd preach. Uh, listen today. Uh, brother, because of uh, that part, uh, brother, that has been put on me, uh, that armor of God, uh, brother, has been proved out uh, time and time and time again and I know the word <laughs> Saul dressed him up Saul said well here's mine you put this on cover your head Cover everything about you. You take this. Listen today. He still didn't know what is going on. But David said, no, I ain't proved that. But listen today. He had a part of him. Brother, he already knew. Brother, the one brother that had delivered him. Brother, from the bear and the lion. Brother, he knew he would deliver today. That's why we're here. Today we know who'll deliver. Don't let Satan beat you down. 
said you can't. The Lord says you can. Brother, don't, Satan said uh, he won't. Uh, Jesus said I will. Uh, listen today. Uh, Jesus is saying, uh, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. He said, uh, take uh, my yoke upon you. Uh, he said, I'll give you rest uh, for my uh, bur- yoke is easy my burden's light. I know where you at. You say, preacher, you ain't got a clue where I'm at. Well, I know where you at. There's somebody here not beat slapped to death. Defeated. Because <laughs> you watch and you say, well, there's no way I can defeat him. No, you can't. But I'll tell you this. Uh, brother, there's one. Uh, brother, that'll fight your battle. Uh, that'll go before you. Uh, brother, that will guide the stone. Uh, brother, and he'll defeat the giant that's standing before you. His name is Jesus, that good shepherd. David said, I cannot go with these, for I not prove them. And David put them off him, and he took his staff in his hand and ch- chose five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had. Even in a script, and his sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. Whew. You know what Satan does every time he looks at you? He says, I can't believe that's all you're coming at me with. Is that all you got? I've been there. A lot of times in my life, I've been there. Satan will look. He may be on that mountain looking, and you on this one. He knows y'all are going to meet. He showed himself to somebody tonight. He said, there ain't no way you can defeat me. Just look at who I am. He's looked at what you brought. He says, is that all you got? And the Philistine came and drew near unto David. And the man that bare the shield went before him. Now listen. Listen to what that says. And the Philistine came on and drew near unto David, and the man that bare the shield went before him. Think about that. That that Philistine presented himself for 40 days over there like he was somebody. But there's a man that went in front of him with a shield. Why do you think that was? He wasn't as sure as he thought he was. Folks, Satan knows when you come in the presence of the Lord, he's defeated. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him, for he was but a youth and rudy of a fair countenance. And the Philistine said unto David, Am I a dog that thou camest to me with staves? And the Philistine cursed David. By his gods. And the Philistines said, and said to David, Come to me, and I will give thy flesh unto the clouds of the air and the beast of the fields. Then David said to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts and the God of the armies of Israel, who thou hast defiled. Listen tonight. Go in the name of the Lord. Trust him and step out. This day the Lord will deliver thee into my hand, and I will smite thee and take take thine head from me, and I will give the carcass of the host of the Philistines this day to the clouds of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth, that the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. You know what? <clears throat> Lost person, you know, you know what the greatest thing that you need in your life? The greatest thing that you need to see tonight is a victory. Church, the greatest thing that the church can see tonight is a victory. I'm talking about a battle being won. The 
between this flesh and the spirit, Satan, and the Lord. Brother, we need tonight with everything in us to see a victory. We can't do it unless we go in the name of the Lord. And it came to pass when the Philistine arose, and it came and drew nigh to meet David. David hasted and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine, and David put his hand in his bag and took thence a, home, a stone and slang it and smote the Philistine in his forehead that the stone sunk into his forehead and he fell upon his face to the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a slaying of a stone. They smote the Philistine and slew him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. Thank God today that good shepherd was on his side. You know what? <laughs> David was just a shepherd himself. But he wasn't a good shepherd. He had the good shepherd fighting a fight for him. Today, I, you know what? You know what folks refer to a preacher as? Just a shepherd of the flock. But we're not the good shepherd. Bible said, Christ said the good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. He's the one that gives his life. Let us stand tonight. If you're here lost and undone without the Lord, listen. You can win that battle. Don't let Satan have more than he deserves tonight. Give it to the Lord. Give it to the Lord tonight. He's taunted you and said you can't, you can't. Don't give in to him another minute. But just give it to the Lord. When I thought about David, there's just that young little old boy and everybody's saying, you can't go against him. You can't do that. You know what? No doubt. David at some point probably had thoughts in his mind saying, you know what? I can't. Some folks say he never had them thoughts. I don't know. He, the Bible don't say he did. Brother, he was flesh and blood just like you and I was. And I, I could just imagine him having thoughts. Say, you know what? They're probably right. You know what he went on? Faith tonight. He went on faith, believing and trusting the Lord that had delivered him. The Bible says we're saved by grace through faith. Nobody in here tonight got saved without stepping out on that faith. They had to believe. Once they were convicted, they had to believe that the Lord had saved them. Do not just step out on that same faith. Trusting and believing. Everybody that's been saved tonight had to, had to make a move toward the Lord. He didn't force himself on no man. And he never will. But we got to make our move toward him tonight. I mentioned just a little bit about a praise and a worship team. I'm going to tell you this. Them boys is in the battle. I mean a true battle. Right now in your life, you're in a battle. If you're lost and undone, you're in a battle because you need the Lord. You want to hear of a good, good, good old-fashioned praise and worship team? Brother, when I guarantee you, whenever that giant went down, brother, there's, there's an army Brother, on this side of the mountain, brother, that was able to sing the praises of God because of one little man. Brother, the Bible says because of one man's disobedience, all was made sinner. But by one man, one man's obedience, brother, uh, we're all, brother, are able to be made alive tonight. His name is Jesus. You'll have a praise team around you. You want a praise team. You accept the Lord. We'll, we'll praise the Lord with you. I told Andy today, I said, Andy, I'll go as far as the Lord will let me. He said, you carry it out just like it was where you pastor. And I want to do my very best to give you the opportunity to meet the Lord. Very best. 
Don't miss it tonight. Don't miss heaven. You miss heaven, you're going to miss it all. You'll miss it all. You say, preacher, I didn't like your preaching. Well, I didn't either. Don't miss heaven. Listen, you might not have liked it. That's all right. It don't matter. But don't miss it. The only reason I preach is because the Lord called me and I love you. I want to bid you, don't miss it. Time's drawing near. It's drawing near. We see it. Read the Holy Word of God. It's drawing nearer and nearer. This world, it it gets worse and worse every day that we live. I told my daddy one time, we'd we'd talk, we'd, we'd start talking about the news. I said, Daddy, I don't want to hear all that. You can get yourself in a bad way listening to that. You can before you before you know it, you can listen to CNN and, and all the other ones, and you can have yourself depressed in about fifteen minutes. Focus your your eyes on things that are eternal. All of this is temporary anyway. Focus your eyes on Jesus. Some of this stuff don't make a hill of beans. You say, well, don't you care about your country as much as you do? Ain't you proud to be part? I'm proud to be American. But let me tell you this. Don't let all these politics and, and things that cares of this world get in the way of you serving the Lord. Just follow Him. We There's a lot of things we ain't got no control over anyway. Do you know that? You want to be a good citizen? You you go and you vote the conviction of your heart. And you do what's right and, and, and to obey the law of this land. But let me tell you this. Your peace don't come from Joe Biden. It don't come from Barack Obama. It don't come from Donald Trump. Brother, the only peace you're going to get has to come from the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, it's in a turmoil. I, I understand that. I don't like it the more than you do. But I don't put my trust in this world. It's an eternal thing. I'm, we're going home one day. This, this earth right here, let me tell you, ain't your home. This ain't our dwelling place. We're just, <laughs> just I say it all the time, we're just pilgrims and strangers passing through. This is not your home. You've got either heaven to gain or a hell to shun. And the Lord has presented His self, I believe, to somebody. It's up to you what you do with Him. Say, preacher, can you help me out? I've done my best to help you and point you toward Jesus. Now it's on you. It's your it's your your opportunity to do something with Him. I can't save you. If I could, I'd save you, but I can't. May God bless you tonight. Lost person, if you're here tonight, don't say that. Find the Lord. You know what? A lot of times it seems like preachers just hammered, hammering on you, hammering on you, hammering on you. We love you. We love you. Christ said he didn't want to see you perish, but all come to repentance. Greatest thing I ever done was accepting him into my life. I didn't have to go looking for him. He came looking for me. I'm so thankful he did. So unworthy. Y'all remember Eric Watson? He'll be here bringing the message tomorrow night. He wanted to preach tonight. I told him no. <laughs> <laughs> Just wouldn't let him. Y'all know that's the truth. <laughs> but thank you again for being here. Y'all, y'all pray for Pastor Amy. Uh, pray for the Lord and just be with him and his family. I know it's killing him. He couldn't be here tonight. But y'all, he loves y'all. I hope y'all know that. I watched him break down here, just, just broke down in tears. So y'all remember him. Y'all text him, let him know how much you love him. Tell him you can't wait for him to come back when you do or not. <laughs> <laughs> Encourage him anyway. I know he loves y'all and loves this place. 
I love Andy. Uh, haven't known him a very, very long time, but, but I've known him a few years. He helped me. I, I think that was his first revival when I was over at Mill Creek. He uh, helped me. And over there, I, I don't think he knew how to t- take me on a whole lot. Cause <laughs> I aggravated him all week. And, and the boy that's helping us, we just, we picked on him and, and he'd just look at us. <laughs> I said, you better hold on. You got, you got a long journey. And, and I think, you know what, them old men, I, my daddy's 84 years old. I'll let you go in just a second. My daddy's 84 years old, and he's helping in revival over at Gravel Springs this week. And I called him this evening. I said, Daddy, I said, Andy's got COVID. I said, and he's pretty much said I'm in charge of the services the rest of the week. And I was looking for some sympathy from him. <laughs> he said, son, you'll be all right. I said, yeah, but I've got Sunday morning service and Sunday night service too when I get back to church. He said, you'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> well, them old preachers won't help you out. <laughs> They'll put you right there in the middle of the fire and say, go. He said, five services in a row ain't too bad. I said, I know, but when you've already preached five and got five more to look at, you're hurt. You don't know the Lord I do. He said, you'll be all right. So I called Melissa's brother. He's a good bit older than me. I told him the same thing. You know what he said? You'll be all right. <laughs> I think you talk to the same people I do. <laughs> so y'all pray for us. Y'all, y'all remember Eric tomorrow as he comes. and uh, Y'all remember him next week. Uh, Andy was supposed to be helping him over at Etowa next week. And Andy was the only help he got. So now he's out of any help. And he don't know my phone number. He <laughs> Y'all, y'all, y'all do remember here tomorrow night and uh, remember the church, remember the lost, just pray that pray that they move when the Holy Spirit of God moves on them, just to give them that, that ounce of faith that the Lord promised us that, that He'd give to move. Pray that they'd have it to move. May God bless you tonight. Let's just shake hands one with another and you're living to go.